In this video, we're going to look at net swap payments. Let's get straight to the example. Uh, Beth has a four-year variable rate loan of 1000 where interest rate is reset annually to the one-year spot interest rate. She pays interest only at the end of each year and repays the principal of 1000 at the end of four, at the end of year four. Beth enters into a four-year swap interest rate swap with annual settlement wherein she pays a fixed rate and receives the variable rate. At the time the swap is entered into, spot rates are, so if you look at this, it says the one-year spot rate is going to be 1%, the two-year spot rate is 2%, and so forth. And we're asked to determine Beth's net swap payments for each year. So let me highlight in red this very wordy part of the problem, and all of that's describing for you there is an interest rate swap. This is, this is it's a lot of words, but all it's doing is describing the interest rate swap. And it says that Beth enters into, let's see, the very last sentence, the very last line in red says wherein she pays a fixed rate. That fixed rate is the swap rate. So she pays the swap rate and receives the variable rate. In other words, Beth is going to be the payer, uh, not the receiver. Beth is the payer because the payer is the one who pays the fixed rate. Okay, so uh, very wordy, but that's, that's just uh, to set it up. That's All that's doing is setting up the problem. Okay, so remember what an interest rate swap is, is it's a, uh, uh, it's a uh, you have a, a timeline where you have um, interest payments that are based off of these forward rates. Uh, uh, these forward rates will not be equal to each other, so they're going to be all these different forward rates, and I want to swap that for interest payments that are based off of a level interest rate of I, so I want to swap it for these payments. Now, I'm actually technically asked to find the Beth, uh, Beth's net swap payments for each year, so let's just pick year two and, and uh, just kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Let's look at year two. And what's the net swap payment? Well, remember the net swap payment is the amount that you're going to that you're going to receive, the amount you're going to get, minus the amount that you're going to pay. Uh, and so in this case, um, uh, if I look at the problem more closely, we're talking about Beth, and, and, and the problem says Beth pays the fixed rate and receives the variable rate. And as I did in the previous video, I'm going to put in green what we're going to get. We're th I'm thinking of, of being Beth. I'm a, um, what are we going to get? I'm going to put in green. That's money we're getting. And then uh, paying, I'm going to put in red. That's, that's going out. And so in this case, on my timeline then, Beth, Beth is going to be paying the 1,000 and I and receiving the 1,000 times the forward rate. So, um, so for Beth then, the, the, who is the payer, as I mentioned before, Beth's the payer, this net swap payment at time two would just be the, what she's receiving is the, what's in green, the 1,000 times the, the forward rate minus what she's paying, which is in red, the 1,000 times I, and I could factor out a 1,000 if I wanted to. This is symbolically what the, uh, what the, the payments, uh, what the net swap payment is, but I just suggest we go through, and, and this is what we're about to do, let's just go through and numerically get these values and think of it from a numerical calculation as, instead of just a, a symbolic uh, formula. Okay, so going back, this is our timeline. The first thing that I have to do here is calculate what that I value is. Uh, notice that I have level notional amounts, and when I have level notional amounts, I, I re recall that the uh, I got this nice formula for the swap rate. When I have level notional amounts, this is that formula. Uh, now, what are these? Uh, what are these v values equal to? Uh, uh, for instance, in the numerator, v sub four is the v value with respect to a four-year spot rate, and I go pluck out the four-year spot rate that's using a k value of four. It's four percent. So the v sub four. Uh, in the numerator is a 1.04 to the minus 1. The v sub 4 to the 4th will be 1.04 to the minus 4. And you can uh, likewise plug in the other values. At this point, it's, you just have this tedious numerical calculation to do. And if I didn't make a mistake on this, I got something, I got, I got close to a 3.901% number. So that's what my swap rate is. That's the first step in the problem is to calculate what the swap rate is. Now I need more room, so let me just move the timeline up to the top of the screen, and uh, and that's what I have. Now, uh, uh, I've, I know what the I value is, so all of those payments uh, uh, that are being swapped, all of those payments that Beth is, is paying, the 1,000 times I, now will be 1,000 times the numeric value 0 0.03901. So uh, 1,000 times that I is 39.01. So Beth is going to be paying $39.01 every at the end of every year for the next four years that's as the payer that's what she's going to be paying 
Um, now I need to uh, let's look at those forward rates. So uh, in order to do that, let me remind you that the one year spot rate was 1%, the two year spot rates 2% and so forth. And so um, the forward rate from time zero to time one, where you're going from time zero to time one, that's just nothing more than the one year spot rate of one uh, of 0 0.01. So at the payment at time one that's being swapped, the, the payment at time one is 1,000 times the forward rate from time zero to time one, and that forward rate is 0 0.01, so plug in a 0 0.01 for that, and 1,000 times 0 0.01, you get 10. So a payment of at time one of 10 is being swapped for a payment of 39.02. Likewise, at time two, I need the forward rate at time two, uh, the forward rate from time one to time two, and uh, there's your formula for the forward rate from time one to time two. The two-year spot rate is two percent. The one-year spot rate is one percent, and so I get a uh, about a 3.009 value for that forward rate. So at time two, the payment is 1,000 times that 0 0.03009 number. So that's uh, about a thirty dollars, about a 30.09 payment. Uh, let's do the same thing. The forward rate at time uh, from time at time three, the forward rate, I need the forward rate from two to time three. And so when I numerically calculate that, I get about a 0.05029. 1,000 times that would be a, a $50.29. And then at time four, I need the forward rate from time three to time four. So there's your formula for the forward rate from time three to time four. The, forward, uh, the spot rate at time four is 4%. The spot rate at time three is 3%. Uh, go through the numeric calculation, multiply that times 1,000 to get the payment at time four, and I got a $70.58. Payment. So let me clean up, uh, clean up the slide a little bit by just listing out what the forward rates are without, without the intermediate steps. Uh, so that's what I have so far. Let's go back to the problem, and the problem says that Beth is paying the fixed rate and receiving the variable rate. And, and we're looking to determine Beth's net swaps. A net swap payment for each year. She pays the fixed rate. Beth's the payer. So she's going to be paying the uh, 39.01 each year and receiving uh, the non-level payments there. So uh, let's put what she's receiving in green, what she's paying in red, and then we're ready to calculate Beth's net swap payments each year. Uh, so for at time one, the net swap payment, she's going to be getting 10 and paying 39.01. So the net swap payment at time one will be a negative 29.01. So the negative means that uh, at time one, Beth is going to be paying or Beth owes $29.01. Again, this very practical stuff. Uh, Beth is not going to make the person pay her 10 and then turn around and pay the other person 39.01. We're just going to do this net calculation in our head and say, oh, well, Beth owes $29.01 at time one. Likewise, at time two, Beth's going to be receiving 30.09 and paying 39.01. But you're not practically, you're not going to make the other person pay. Beth's not going to make the other person pay 30.09 and then turn around and pay 39.01. Beth's going to say, oh, the difference there is a negative 8.92. In other words, I owe you, Beth owes 8.92 at time two. At time three, uh, Beth receives $50.29, pays the 39.01. So at time three, Beth net nets is being paid $11.28. And then at time four, Beth is going to receive 70.58, pay out 39.01 uh, for a net payment. Beth receives a net payment of $31.57. Okay, once again, let me clean up the slide a little bit by just taking out the intermediate steps. That's our answer. We've got these net swap payments. I do want to make a couple of observations before we move on, though. So those are the net swap payments at times one, two, three, and four. The first question that I want to uh, uh, kind of address is uh, what is going to be the present value of those net swap payments? So the, the net swap payment at time one is uh, uh, tw the negative 29.01 is, is, is a time one value. I need to discount that. Uh, by multiplying by a v to the a v sub one, I need to discount the negative 8.92 by multiplying by a v sub two squared, and so forth. And so the present value there would be this expression, and um, 
Now, what are the values, the V sub 1, the V sub 2 squared, the V sub 3 cubed, and so forth? Let's plug in the numeric values of those using the one-year spot rate, the two-year spot rate, and so forth in the proper places. And what you'll find is that the present value of the net swap payments, uh, you might want to, you know, you might have, you know, should think of this, you know, before I give you the answer, you should think, well, it, it should be zero. The net swap payments should be zero. That Remember, this was done in a fair way. So the present uh, and the fair way was that the present value of, of the payments were equal to each other. So the va present value of the net swap payments should be equal to zero. And, and it is. The present value of the net swap payments is zero. Now, technically, when I did this calculation that I have on the screen now, I got like 0 0.01. I got like one penny. And that's just round off error. If you did the, everything exactly, you would get exactly zero. Okay, there's one other comment. Uh, uh, so the, that's one fact that the present value of the net swap payments is zero. Um, kind of got ahead of myself. Uh, in other words, I could actually def make this definition, I could actually define the swap rate to be the fixed interest rate that makes the present value of the net swap payments equal to zero. So that net swap payment I there, the 0 0.039, if that was the unknown in, in, uh, in the calculation of a net swap payments, then uh, I could define that I to be the interest rate that makes the present value of the net swap payments equal to zero. Okay, so now let's, uh, uh, there's one other observation that I want to make. So let's go back to the original problem and let me highlight in red where it says the interest rate is reset annual, annually to the one year spot interest rate. So uh, let, let me explain in a little bit more detail what's going on there. So hopefully help you understand what's going on with these swaps. So this was my, this was my timeline. Um, this, this was the original timeline. If I look at what's going on from time zero to time one, well, at time zero, I know the one-year spot rate is 0 0.01. So at time zero, uh, that payment of 10 uh, uh, is based off of that one-year spot rate of, of 0 0.01. That's an actual value that I know to be, th that's an actual value. And so uh, I know then that the net swap payment at time one of negative 29.01 there on the bottom left, that's an actual value. That's a real value. That's going to happen. That is for sure going to happen. But if I look between time one and time two, I'm using the forward rate. Uh, I use the forward rate from time one to time two uh, to get that value of a 30.09 at time two. But going back to the problem, the problem says the interest rate is reset annually to the one-year spot rate uh, one year spot interest rate. So when I get to time one, the interest rate is going to be reset to whatever the one year spot rate is between time one and time two. Uh, well, it won't, one year from now, that won't be between time one and time two. One year from now, it'll be between my new time zero and time one. It would be my new one year spot rate. But I don't know what that rate is at time zero. And so I, the only thing I know to use to, to accumulate between time one and time two at time zero when originally Beth entered into the swap would be the forward rate from time one to time two. And so actually the forward rate from time one to time two is the expected, this is what we expect, the one year spot rate, uh, this is the expected one year spot rate in effect one year from now. Uh, one year from now, we expect the one-year spot rate to be this 3.009% number. It, it, we don't know what it's going to be because it's a year from now, but this is what we would expect it to be based off of the current term structure of interest rates. All right, and so what I'm saying then is that the net swap payment at time two then would actually be an expected value. That's what we expect the net swap payment to be at time two. Likewise, if I went between time two and time three, I used the forward rate from time two to time three to get that $50.29 number. But the forward rate from time two to time three is what we expect the one year spot rate to be two years from now. And so this implies then that the net swap payment at time three is an expected value. And finally, from time three to time four, um, I used the four rate from time three to time four to get the 70.58 number. Uh, and that forward rate is what I expect the one year spot rate to be in effect uh, uh, three years from now. So uh, the, the net swap payment at time four is also an expected value.
Okay, so uh, the first net swap payment was an actual value that's real. Though we know what that value is going to be, but the other ones are, are, are merely just expected values. And in the next video, which is going to be very similar, I'm going to use the same numbers as this, uh, start off with the same numbers as this video. We're going to look and see what happens uh, a year later. A year passes, and now we have more information because in a year we'll know what the new spot rates are, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk in the next video about what the market value of the swap will be will be so it'll be very similar to the uh, uh, to what's going on in this video all right I'll see you in the next video